Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a neon sign in Illustrator. We're going to draw the sign and then we're going to add a neon look to it. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to do. We're going to draw out this shape in Illustrator and then add the neon effect to it. And we're going to do it in such a way that we can just drag and drop the effect onto any part of this image. So if you're ready, let's get started. I'm going to create a brand new document file new and I'm just going to create a 1000 by 1000 pixel document. I'm using RGB color mode. So I'll just click OK. Now with this I'm going to add a black background. So I'm just going to switch the fills here and turn my stroke off and I'm going to create a rectangle that is the size of my background. It's filled with black and in the layers over here I have my layers panel visible by choosing window layers. I'm going to just lock this so it's not going to move but I can create shapes and things on top of it. So now let's go and get a stroke. I'm going to this time choose a sort of pink stroke just so I can see what I'm doing at this stage. And because I need to draw this shape I'm going to start out with the ellipse tool. So I'm going to draw out the shape I'm going to use for the top of the glass. And at this point if I want to I can actually increase the stroke. It might make it a little bit easier for you to see things as you're working if you do that. Now I'm going to get the dreaded pen tool because it really is quite a simple pen tool approach to create this glass. So I'm just going to click here underneath the edge of the glass and I'm going to click down here. Now I don't want to click in the middle because the glass needs to have a stem. So this would be the middle point. I want to click a little bit to the left of it and probably about there. And that will create the edge of the glass or the bottom edge of the glass. Now I'm going to run straight down. So that green line there is telling me I'm immediately below the previous point. That's exactly where I want to be. I'm going to click. And then I'm going to click out here for the base of the glass, which doesn't need to be as wide as the glass itself. So I'm just going to create a base here. Now at this point, instead of just clicking, I'm going to click and drag because I want to create a slightly rounded edge to it. I'm going to fix the edge in a minute. And then I'm going to click back here, but at this time I want to click under the middle of this shape because I want to be able to reflect this to create the stem of the glass. And so I'm going to need to come out all the way to the middle here and click. And that really is it. Now to turn this off, because this is really annoying, I'm just going to hold the control key and then click away and then that just turns that off. So now I've got the shape of my glass. Now before I stick these two pieces back again, I'm just going to grab the zoom tool. Let's just zoom into this area because I want to make a small change to it. Just going to get rid of my symbols palette. So I'm going to grab the direct selection tool here and just click on this point because this is the one I want to change. What I want to do is to break these two arms away from each other. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key so that I get that little plus sign. So now I can break these apart. So they're going to behave and move independently of each other. Let's go back here. And this time I'm just going to bring this handle up because I want a sort of flatter base to my glass. So here I just want to move this, making sure that that green line appears. Now that's a guide and you can see these by choosing view and I've got smart guides turned on here. So that's actually showing me when I'm positioned correctly. Now control zero to get back out. Now I'm going to use the selection tool. I'm going to select over my shape. So I have it selected. I'm going to choose object transform reflect. And you can see I already have Reflect turned on and the Preview turned on. So I'm going to reflect over the vertical. I want the Preview turned on so I can see actually what's going to happen. Just make sure it's going to look correct and then click Copy because I want to make a duplicate. And then I'm going to go and grab the second one and move it across to make the rest of my glass. Now I'm going to zoom because I want to join these two pieces up. So just to zoom in here and I'm going to probably need to grab these two anchors here. So I'm going to select over both of them and choose Object, Path, Join. And that just joins that path together. Now I've got too many bits here so I'm going to go to the Delete Anchor Point and just get rid of one of them. And then with the Direct Selection tool I can just smooth out 
this point here just so it looks a bit better. So Control 0 to get back to viewing my image as it is so far. So there are two of the pieces for our object. I'm just going to grab the Select Tool and just move it into position. Now we want an olive and a straw. So the olive is just a really simple ellipse. So I'm just going to draw out an ellipse and then with the Selection Tool just rotate it and then just move it into position. And the straw is just going to be a straight line, but since it's going to need to break up across the edge of the glass, I'm actually going to create it as multiple straight lines at this point. So there's the first one, and here's the second one, and here's the third one. So I'm just going to make sure that they're pretty right. You could just copy and paste each of these elements so you make sure they're in the direct line, but it's a neon sign so we don't need to be too fussy about it. But we will, to make it look neonish, need to select the stroke. We want caps to be round and we want any corners to be round on any of these objects. So I'm actually going to select everything and I'm going to select the stroke up for all of these all at once. Caps round, corners round because neon is never harsh. It never has really sharp ends on it. So they're all the shapes that go to create our mini illustration and now we're ready to apply a neon effect. For the neon effect I'm going to select these two elements which is the circle at the top and the glass shape itself and I'm going to make those blue so I'm going to make sure that I have selected a bright blue colour here. Now you need the Appearance panel to be visible and you can get to that by choosing Window and then Appearance. And so we're going to look at our stroke here. So I'm going to select on my stroke and I'm just going to eyeball a reasonable width for this element and I think about seven points is pretty good. We need to add a blur to this so I'm going to choose Effect and then Blur and then Gaussian Blur. We need to be able to see the effect, so I'll click on Preview. And we're just going to look for a good blur effect. Now the amount of pixels that you use for the radius is going to be dependent on the size of your shape and the width of your stroke and also your personal aesthetics. So I'm thinking for me about 3.8 is good, so I'm going to click OK. Having applied that stroke, we're now going to apply another stroke. So I'm going to click here on Add New Stroke. And that just repeats the current stroke but without the Gaussian Blur. Now for this I'm going to select a sort of light grey. So I'm thinking this grey here, it's RGB 204 for all of those values. It's a light grey. And I don't want it to be quite as wide, so I want to sit it inside the existing stroke. So I'm going to wind that down to probably around three points wide. And for its opacity, well, I'm going to click the opacity. I want the opacity to stay at 100%, but this gives me access to blend modes. And I want to screen this, so I want it to be applied in screen blend mode, which is always a lighter blend mode. And then I'm going to go and do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to use white. And again, a slightly narrower stroke weight, probably about one point. Now the opacity of this also will be set to screen, again so everything is lightened. And if I'm happy with that result, that's going to be my neon look. And so I'm going to grab the Selection Tool, grab this shape, and I'm going to drag and drop it into my Graphic Styles dialog. And you get to that by choosing Window and then Graphic Styles. So I'm just going to pick it up and drop it up in here. And what that does is it creates a graphic style for this neon effect. And because the neon effect has been created with two strokes, both of which are grey, and one stroke which is coloured, it's going to be really easy for us to apply it to other shapes and recolour it very quickly. So I'm going to select my olive, and I'm just going to click on my graphic style. Now that's going to make my olive blue. If I want it to be green with the olive still selected and the appearance panel still visible, I'm just going to come in here and click on this colour and make it green. And all of a sudden we have a green olive. So let's go and get our straw. I'm going to click on each of these elements in turn, holding the shift key so all three are selected. I'm going to apply our neon graphic style to all these shapes. 
And then if I want a different color, I'm just going to, with these shapes still selected from the Appearance panel, double click on this and make them a different color, such as yellow or pink. Let's make this one pink and then click away from it. So there's our neon effect, which is created using multiple strokes in the Appearance panel and then created as a style so it can be easily applied to other shapes in our illustration. Now if you want to go a step further as I did in the original, you may want to cut this path apart and you could do that using the scissors tool. So let's just go and grab this circular path. Let's go and get the scissors tool. And what I did was just click on the path in a couple of places to break it apart and then go and select the direct selection tool and click on this part and then you can just press delete to delete it. You can then move this arm here just by going and getting the direct selection tool and just dragging on it and move it close to the edge of the glass. I'm going to use the lasso tool so I can just grab both these points. I'm just dragging over these two points, object, path, join and that will just join them into a single path. So you can see that the neon would run around like this and around. And all I'd need to do is go in here and just clean things up a little bit. Probably ended up with too many anchors, so I can go and select the Delete Anchor Point tool. And then I can go and convert this point press Control 0 to have a look and see what I'm doing in a larger context and then just round out this edge. So with a little bit of manipulation of this edge, it's easy for me to make it look as if this is a single piece of neon glass wound round to create this object. And of course, if you want to give it a little bit of excitement, you can grab the entire shape and then just rotate it. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.